<laughs> is that our cue, Kafe? Is that when we start? This yes, that's where you start. Exactly. This is All right. Hey, so awesome to be with our SOS family all over Europe, I guess. And even I think I saw some Kenyans here as well. Uh, I may be wrong, but but awesome. Hey, it's just an honor for Stephanie and myself to spend some time with you and talk about marriage and family. And uh, it's been some years since we were a part of the church in Stockholm. So we may be a new face to many, but like Pastor Koffe said, or Christopher, I don't know what to call you anymore, but Koffe, uh, that we were part of, of the team. Actually, Johannes led me to, to Jesus uh, 24 years ago. So I was even a first fruit there that um, um, Johannes led me to Jesus, taught me everything I know. I was going through the Bible school the first year the Bible school started. Stephanie, you went through like the third or fourth year or something like that. And um, I was roommate with Samuel Vilkander, who is down in Kenya right now, but uh, planting the church together with that original team. But we have so many connections. And with Europe, Timothy, and I see you there, my friend. And we know Sarah and Matt in in France, France as well, and and uh, Jonathan and Anna in Gothenburg, and Jensen's down in Malmo. It's like it's just a big family for all of us to be a part of this and and to talk about this. And um, I mean, we want to get started too. We we come from a legacy of marriage. I want to say we believe in marriage, and we believe that marriage is for life. My parents has been married now for. 20 uh, sorry 45 years and still going strong your parents for 35, 35 i yeah. think um we married young we've been married now for 16 years and uh, we believe in marriages we know it takes a lot of work and hard work and intentional work and and that's why we are honored that you're joining us uh, here tonight as well because you believe the same you you want to believe in this so we want to just uh, start and pray just for a minute and just pray for you and pray for this night and and just believe that the Holy Spirit will speak uh, to you and, and hopefully through us uh, into your marriage and into your relationships tonight. So let's just pray. Father, we thank you that you have brought this big SOS global family together and we pray today that you will speak, God, um, and anoint this moment that we have together, both the live moment we have and the people watching later on YouTube. We pray for your anointing. We pray for your presence. We pray for healing where healing needs to take, take place and strength to already strong marriages, God. We pray today that you will, that you will blow your wind and, and send your wind into the sails of all the marriages, God, that we can take steps closer to one another as spouses, but also closer to you together in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, our background right now is we are part of a life-giving, growing church in Austin, Texas called City Reach Church, uh, serving as the executive pastors there. Johannes is a part of our advisory board, so he's still involved. He was actually here just uh, two, three weeks ago and preached on a Sunday. Uh, it was amazing, amazing. Um, but here's what we want to say to, to start off with, to make everyone calm and, and get everyone on the same page. Uh, we all have different backgrounds. Like Stefan and I, we have different backgrounds. Like in, So you should understand, in my family... Uh, I never, ever in my life saw my parents fight. I never saw them raise their voices once toward one another. Uh, so if they would ever disagree on anything, uh, I was terrified. Like I thought, oh my gosh, they're getting a divorce. There's tension in the air. They are not on the same page, but they were not even fighting. They were just disagreeing. So that was the culture I came from. And your family dynamics was a little bit different. They fought. Yeah, totally opposite. <laughs> loud. Loud. Every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously not crazy big fights, but you would definitely hear voices raised on yeah. a daily basis. So um, that we, was a different dynamic for us coming together. And Yeah. And, and that's really the foundation we just want to lay. Like we all come from different backgrounds and nothing is really normal. Like, like we are not going to give you what the normal marriage looks like, but we want to give you guys tools uh, so that you can work on where you are at because your marriage will be different than ours and, and ours will be different than yours. But there are foundation 
uh, that we want to just speak into, and that is that we all have to work on it. Um, and it takes intentional work. We need to spend time on our marriages and, and money on our marriages. And we said something since the very beginning that we want to make sure that we invest more time and we invest more focus. We invest even more money into our marriage than we do into that we did into our wedding. Uh, now we were young and we didn't have a lot of money. So our wedding wasn't that expensive, but the principle is still there. Uh, that um, sometimes we just focus so much on our weddings and we kind of forget about that we have now. It's just the beginning, right? Why? Because all all fancy movies from Hollywood, they is this struggle between a couple that are like in love with one another. And then the movie would end with them getting married, like, okay, and they lived happily ever after. If you married, you know that when you married, that's actually when the work began. Uh, so, so the culture is giving us the wrong information. Like, well, we did it. We actually got married. No, this is where it starts. And we just made it an intentional choice um, to every year, uh, every year we read at least one book about marriage um, together and we talk about it. Uh, we, we try to lead small groups or life groups or house churches uh, focused on marriages, bringing other married couples around and just talking about marriages, investing into marriages. Why? Because the devil has come and he's got one focus and it is to kill and steal and destroy. So we need to be ready and be aware that, that he will come after your marriage. He wants to kill and steal uh, and destroy everything that you have together because this is your, after Jesus, your most important relationship. And the devil hates it. Uh, uh, so be ready. The devil is coming after you. Uh, I'm sorry to say, but and you'd be like, well, can you be more positive Daniel and Stephanie, yeah, I'm positive the devil is coming after you. I know he is on his way. So we need to focus and we need to be ready uh, uh, to, to work on it. Um, and, and this is just, we're just starting up here. We just want to give you like the foundation and background because here's the other fact now that we all deal with is that we've been through a pandemic now the, the past year and it's created a lot of tension, to be honest, on our marriages and our relationships and family lives with kids and everything. And, 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 and some of you may still be on lockdown in different parts of the world. Uh, and, and, and it's just that isolation and quarantine and social distancing and all those things that is now thrown into the mix. Uh, it's important that we then be more intentional in this time to work on our marriages and believe that that God has something great for you because that is his plan for your marriage. And you're here today. You're part of this. It's a good choice. It's already a good step uh, that you are invested into this. So let's get started. And uh, the question is, why did you log on? Why are you here? What is your motivation to be a part of a Bible study and a seminar and a topical uh, discussion and conversation like this. And, and the most common answer to that would probably be like, uh, why are you here? Well, maybe you're thinking, well, I just want a happy marriage. I just want to be happy in my marriage. Um, yeah. So let's and, talk about that. Um, that's a great question, but um, the goal is not to have a happy marriage. And that kind of <laughs> sounds like I'm killing the buzz right here, but um, our culture is so saturated with, I know we've probably been a part of doing this ourselves, like you should do what makes you happy or you deserve someone who makes you happy, um, but happiness should not be the goal of your marriage. And so when we look at that question, what is the goal of our marriage and what is the motivation? And so um, if if happiness is the motivation, we're going to find ourselves in a marriage that will not be successful because we're going to let each other down. He's not going to make me happy every day. He has not made me happy every day. <laughs> what? And so, um, but happiness is a byproduct of actually being obeying, obedient to God and honoring God. So instead of having the motivation be that happiness is my motivation my motivation should be, and a question that I could is, what can I do to honor God in this situation? How can I be Christ-like in this relationship? Um, 
So happiness is not the goal for your marriage, but Christ likeness is. And so I would just love for you to look at your spouse deep in their eyes and just tell them what a gift they are to you. Just say, what a gift you are to me. What a gift you are to yeah. me. Yeah, because they are, right? Um, they There is no better tool that God has given you than this person next to you who helps you practice love and he helps you practice peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and self-control and once you add a couple kids in there you're going to practice these even more so um but saying all of this just for us to know that lack of happiness is not a sign of a bad relationship but it can be the sign of a relationship aiming for the wrong thing mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like we're treating happiness as a human right and we just want to debunk that first of all um, you are married to honor God and, and it's really the walk you do, go walk out together. No one forces me to be more like Jesus than Stephanie. So, so our goal is to honor God. If I honor God with my choices, then we will, we will have happiness as a byproduct. So it's just, it's like, there is, I don't know, remember what Olympic game this was, but it was actually an, an uh, American archer at the Olympic not too long ago that was um, the best in the world, by far the best in the world. And everyone knew he will win. He's the shooter. He's the archer that will actually win the gold. It's, it was a discussion who will come in second. No one could beat this guy. So he's here at the, at the finals in the Olympics and shooting his first shot and and the second shot and they all hit the bullseye but not until his third shot did he realize true story that he was shooting on the wrong target he was shooting at, at his opponent's target so he was hitting bull's eyes but on a wrong target and he came in second he lost the finals because he was shooting at the wrong place and 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 that's sometimes in life we may be hitting bull's eyes in in our in the things we are trying to achieve but we have to ask ourselves am i aiming at the right target and if my target is happiness 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 then i will be let down because there will be days when i don't feel like stephanie's making me happy and and if i'm putting that on her instead on on my relationship with jesus then I'm in trouble. And I will find myself saying, well, maybe we're growing away from one another and, and I don't feel this butterfly emotions every day. And, you know, listen, that is not even a question. We are in a covenant and, and I'm grateful. And I, and I love, I promise to love my wife for the rest of my life. And no matter what the circumstances are, and no matter if I feel the crush, if I feel the butterflies or not, uh, the goal is to, to honor God in all of this. So um, today we want to talk about really the vital signs of a healthy marriage and, and motivation is one of them um, and that we need to go back and look at the foundations, the vital signs and, and, and like think about you going to the doctors, whatever you go into the doctors for. Uh, they're going to check your vitals. The, if you say, well, I, I my, my arm is broken. What is the doctor going to do? They're not just going to fix your arm, but they're going to check your pulse. They're going to, they're going to check your blood pressure. They're going to, they're going to check the oxygen gel, uh, level in your blood. They're going to do all the vitals. No matter why you come in, they are measuring the vitals. So no matter where we are now in our marriage, if we have a good marriage or if we have a a strained marriage right now, if whatever you are in that, let's look at the vital signs, the things that we all have in common. And the first thing is really motivation. And the, the second thing we want to talk about is, is distance, uh, because sometimes we start to feel like we are distance, uh, distancing ourselves from one another. And that's really what we want to look at here together. Um, because if I can now in my walk with my spouse, honor God, then I know we are walking towards one another. And we want to show you the first, we're going to read two scriptures here. Um, Colossians 3.18 says this uh, about marriages now. And it says, wives submit to your husbands as it's fitting for those who belong to the Lord. So how do a wife honor God in her marriage? She will submit to her husband and husbands how do you honor God in your marriage? You love your wives and you never treat them harshly. 
So all of a, all of a sudden here, we can get tangible measuring tools, how we are doing in our God honoring way in our marriage. Is this what we're doing? Listen, just a few verses further down uh, that we are pulling out sometimes to talk about general things in life, but it's, it's connected to the teaching on marriage where it says in verse 23, work willingly at whatever you do uh, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. So I have a choice now to honor God. And I'm looking in, in me investing into my wife as an act of honoring God and, and a, a way to submit to God by loving my wife. Because remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward. You will have happiness. You will have a, a happy marriage, a strong marriage, a, a fruitful, fulfilling marriage if we focus on that. And that the master you're serving is Christ. So, so, so me working on my marriage, it's not just fun. It's not just awesome. I'm disappearing. Look at that technology. It's not just amazing, but, but it's also God honoring. So what can I do that most honors God? So motivation is really the foundation of that. So now let's look at distance. How, where are we in our relationship right now? That's where we need to start. Yeah. So looking at that, you'll pull up a little slide here. Um, just to make it practical and we'll, we'll give you a little assignment at the end of all of this, but just a visual for you to see um, right here and now. We have a little scale here going five, four, three, two, one, zero, and then one, two, three, four, five. And so if we would rate ourselves, zero would be 100% connectiveness. We are 100% connected. We are There's together no in the middle. Distance right there. And then um, we would like you to just think about this, take a little mental note and put yourself, where am I on this scale? And where is my spouse on this scale? And we just wanna do this as a little thing at the end, but just have a little mental note on this so that we can place ourselves and start conversation with one another on actually seeing how far are we apart or are we very close mm -hmm. and see what the next step is on um, how we can work on getting closer. Yeah. So when, 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 when I look at this and I would say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit far away in our relationship right now. I may, you know, score myself a two or a three or four or five. And then my spouse, when I'm thinking about it, not even talking to her yet, she feels like she's really focused on a marriage. Maybe she's zero. Maybe she's there in the middle. She's doing everything she can or, or vice versa, or we are both threes or somewhere the goal is to meet it there in the middle, that we are complete connectedness, but there are distance makers. And those are the distance makers we really want to address today. The distance makers that are making you separating and how can we overcome those distance makers? So we're going to give you five, um, five quick ones and just talk about that practical ones that will be a distance maker between you and your spouse and, and something that will be tangible for you to work on. So the the first distance maker uh, we call neglect. Uh, and and um, the sentence we use there is when we don't give each other the time or focus our relationship needs, we are neglecting one another or we are neglecting our marriage. Now, before we start, uh, we have three kids yeah, and they are 14, 12 and 10. Uh, praise God, they are no longer toddlers. Uh, because we look back at the toddler years or the new, the infant years of having kids and, and sometimes life circumstances just make it busy and, and, and hard to be 100% connected. So, so, so it's legitimate to be busy. Sometimes our life situation, we don't have a choice, but it's, it's really, I have to give a baby. I have to give a, a toddler more focus than I have to give a 10 year old in a different way, but but we just want everyone to just take a deep breath. Maybe you feel like, well, we're really on a two, but you have three toddlers that we had one yeah. once upon a time running around. Just... And I think an important thing is that just to mention that relationships are moving, they're constant and ebb and a flow. And so when you do this little thing at the end, it doesn't really say that this is how, it doesn't really grade you. It's just a tool to help you. Um, to bring back over and over again. Yeah. And because there are, it's moving in and out, it's mm -hmm. flowing and it's coming back. And so it's seasonal and you walk through seasons. And so 
you can't judge the dry seasons mm -hmm. only, but you can't get stuck in those seasons. You need to acknowledge them and then walk out of them. So the distance is, is really the doctor taking your blood pressure. You may feel okay, but when you actually look at the number, hey, we are, both of us are threes. The blood pressure may not be the problem, but it's showing a sign that there is a problem. And that's when we go back to those five things, because if life circumstances are okay, they are not the, the problem. If I have a choice uh, to, to invest in my marriage, will I do so? Uh, will I prioritize time to spend together? Um, forgetfulness is not okay, or lack of intentionality is not okay. But busyness, legitimate business in life is. We want to remind you what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21. He says this famous verse, he says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So where your treasure is, where where you what you value is what where your heart will be where your investment is is where your heart will be so so in on, on at this point we are asking ourselves what are we investing in are we intentional in our investment so that we have a treasure here uh, to invest in and actually then our hearts will be there then our marriage will be a priority for us and we're going to reap uh, the fruit from that. Um, and practically, we're going to give you a practical tool that many of you, maybe all of you have heard, but but you can you can get a reminder of today because 16 years ago, when we were sitting in our pre-marriage counseling sessions with Johannes and Maria Amritzer, they, they gave us this tool that Johannes later put in his marriage and family book um, um, that has really practically helped us and it's still helping us to this day and uh, where he's talking about to be connected to 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 be together in body soul and spirit that it's that you are actually made in three parts you are a spirit that has a soul that lives in a body and now when you are married you're not just marrying a, a pretty person uh, but you're actually marrying a person you're connected now to a person that is also spirit soul and body and we cannot neglect any of those areas so this is a reminder for most of you but it's worth talking about maybe you never heard about it before so but it's a practical tool uh, that you can actually work with today and and Johannes Maria taught us it's in their amazing book about this that that you need to be intentional both spiritually and with your soul and with your body into your marriage and what that will look like is that spiritually that you are connecting. Um, that may look like you pray together. Maybe you read the Bible together. Maybe you serve at the church together. Maybe you worship together. Maybe you have a, a reading a devotional book together. But you do something to invest in your spiritual life together. And, and that is, just to be honest now, that our life together, our spiritual life together, can never replace my personal life with Jesus. Again, we go back to motivation. Uh, my happiness is my responsibility and my happiness will be um, founded in my relationship with Jesus, that I seek after him, that I have a fountain on the inside with living water. That is my time with Jesus that this cannot replace. But on top of that, we need a spiritual connection together. And we need to find time every week to invest in that together. And then you have the soul. You mm -hmm. step in whenever you want yeah. to step in. I'm just I talking about <laughs> Just before you go into yeah. that one, we, we actually just love to emphasize what you just said, but um, to have your own inner spiritual life is the best gift that you can give your spouse. Um, because it's so easy, like the Bible says, like it's so easy to see all the little, let's say, man, splinters. Splinters <laughs> in your in other people and maybe even in your spouse, but you have issues with yourself. And so start working on you and you'll be a better person and a better spouse and a better better parent mm -hmm. if you prioritize your life with Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's even what, maybe you're not married yet. We don't know who's on here and, and that's fine. But sometimes when you're single and you're walking with Jesus and you're looking mm -hmm. at other people, you're thinking, and the conversations like, it, well, is she marriage material? Is he marriage material? That is really the wrong question to say and ask. 
uh, you should always point to yourself, well, am I marriage material? Yeah. A- a- am I mature in my walk with Jesus? Am-, am I working on this person? Because I can never change the behavior of, of someone else. I can only change the behavior of this person right here. Am I marriage material? Am, am I the best version of myself through the Holy Spirit that my spouse deserves to be married to? So, so that's a spiritual aspect, but find that time together. For us, that may look like a sometimes a five-minute prayer on the way to the grocery store. Let's be honest here. Um, it, it is um, at least once a week, we take time with all our kids and we have a morning devotion. I wish you may say, well, why don't you do that every day? Because we don't have time every day. Uh, we are honest, but we make it a priority once a week to worship with our kids. We call it the first 15. We're going to co- come back to that the third week when we talk about more kids and family. Uh, but that's a spiritual moment we have as a, a, as a couple and as a family and uh, maybe it's discussing what we read in the Bible that morning and, and just talking about it. But we find those moments to get intentional moments where we have a spiritual connection. We need to move on. So let's talk about yeah, the soul. And yeah. um, we also soul. We need to spend that time and invest, invest into that together. And that's really um, interests, hobbies, passions, but more importantly, time. Just taking time, being intentional with your time together. Uh, that I don't try to live my life alone over here and Stephanie's living her life alone over here, but we actually, we live life together. That may be intentional as a date night. Uh, We've had the privilege for the past two nights. We are actually on a getaway with our staff here in Austin planning next calendar year. But but nights we we send out all the staffs with their spouses just to invest in dates with their families in in their marriages. Uh, and and do that. That is not just a tool to do until you get married. That is an investment that you have together as a married couple. And I think well. just make um, sometimes date night or especially moving to America was like weekly date nights kind of deal. But make we have had so many home date nights that you can't even know. And you just make it simple. It's more about the time with each other than really the money you spend on doing the things like make just make it a priority to have have the time together and if that's eating i don't know a sandwich together or a cup of coffee um those moments count so it doesn't need to be the quan like the quantity but the quality time that you actually take and you put uh, you cannot see my phone but you put your phone away put it away hide it put it in a different room when you do this we're telling you guys do not try to compete with with someone else's attention put it away and look into each other's eyes and be intentional. Like you said, it's not the quantity, it's the quality of the time you, you spend together in those moments. And there might be a hobby, there may be an interest, may be intentional, or it's like for us now, all our three kids are in school in the same time. So when we have a day off, our date nights are really date lunches nowadays. Like we, we okay, the kids are in school until four o'clock this afternoon. So let's just spend that time and uh, let's go out and have a lunch date together. And it's just a different season. We find those moments. We create those moments at uh, spending time, investing in soul. And then, of course, body. Uh, if you're not married here, uh, please excuse our friends here. But you need to have a lot of sex. Uh, and it's just true. And it's not It's not really... Maria Chapa says, so good. <laughs> <laughs> she actually wrote that before, but that's true. I think every married couple can agree that um, that that's a priority. It's a physical, intimate, and awesome time together when you connect uh, physical as well. God has given us this gift. We need to take advantage of that. We will not go in and talk too much about the creative ways to have sex, but we are saying be creative. Don't be, don't just stay in one place doing the same thing and lights out and the same, th- you know, be fine, be, have fun, be creative. And, and, and another thing, I remember when Johannes Murray ta- talked to us about this and they like, well, you're just about to get married that this will not be a problem for you. And honestly, it wasn't, but I remember they said this and we want to send this to you now because now we know it's true. And there will come a day, especially when you have kids and you're exhausted and both of you are working, whatever that is, that you may not feel like having sex as often anymore. 
And you may have to schedule those times when you actually, hey, we talk about it, we build up expectation, we are going to have sex on Thursday. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just, and then you just do it. Uh, because even if you don't feel like it in the moment, you will never regret afterwards that you actually took that time. I have yet to regret and say, well, I, I wish we didn't have sex today. I mean, it was just a waste of time. Never said that. Never said that, even though I didn't feel like it before. So let's move on and be practical. Uh, so what is healthy? Well, Johannes and Maria is teaching this in their book. The weekly minimum is two times spiritual connection, two times soul connection, two times body connection every week. Um, and this is a great tool to measure where you are in your connectivity and making sure that you do not neglect one another. Yeah, and I actually learned just like a couple of weeks ago talking to Matt and Sarah in France. I don't know if they're <laughs> on here, but she told me the French way of this little weekly minimum. And she said, it's pray a lot, laugh a lot and orgasm a lot. That's what she <laughs> said. That's how we do it in France. <laughs> yeah. Sounded better in French, yeah, but, it yeah, but it's true. It is true. And, and it needs to be a focus. And if now, if we go back and I'm saying it's really helped us because sometimes you may not have a big fight or it may not be, but you just feel there's something in the air. There's some irritation in the air or you, or you just feel like a distance between you. Here's what we've done. I don't know. Like I wouldn't say hundreds of times, but almost I would say uh, we go back and we ask each other, okay, we just feel this. It's like, it's, it's a distance between us. When was the last time we had a spiritual connection? Well, we prayed together yesterday. Okay, so that's not the problem. When was the last time we had sex? Well, we had it two days ago. Okay, so that's not the problem. When was the last time we actually spent time together and had like a date or just intention? Well, it's been weeks. We haven't really invested. Okay, so that's the problem. So let's fix that right now. And 100% of the time, I'm telling you, when, when you focus on, when you look at that, we, we haven't done this consistently at least minimum two times a week, then uh, that is the fix. That is how you move from neglecting into focusing, giving each other the time. Um, we can talk forever about this, but we know Johannes and Maria teach it better. So let's just move on. So here's what we want to say about neglect. How do you overcome this distance maker? Well, you invest in one another. And the best way to do that practically use the two times two times two. Now, if you want to do three times three times three or Seven times, seven times, seven, go ahead, okay? But the minimum is two times a week on all three areas. All right, let's go to the next distance maker uh, that can create a distance between you. It's offense. Um, and the sentence we use here is when we don't take responsibility for hurting each other. Because let's face it, uh, you are going to offend one another, <laughs> because this is the closest person you have in life, you will be, of, you, you cannot live, you cannot have a closer relationship without minor offenses, okay? I want to pause there. I want to make sure we're not talking about major offenses. We're not talking about intentional going after each other to hurt each other. Well, if we are there, we, it's a different problem we have to work on. But those minor offenses, that happens all the time. Uh, and I don't even know, but it can be measured sometimes with like, I just know something is off. Well, it's actually more Stephanie asking me or, or what's going on? Are you okay? And, and I was just say, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. And she knows just by my tone that I'm not fine, but I don't want to admit it right away. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, and, and, and you hear people say, I don't think we ever said about it. If, if you don't know what's wrong, I'm not even going to tell you. Uh, and, and it's like, I, I need to be a mind reader. I don't know what happened, but you have to talk about those things. Uh, don't try to like send vibes to one another to, well, you need to figure this out by yourself. No, um, you need to be able to talk about it. And, and we want to spend some more time next week and talk about how to fight a fair fight and a good fight in those moments. But let's just say today, to be ready to take the blame, be ready to, to, to ask for forgiveness. The worst thing you can do in a situation when someone is bringing an offense, like, hey, I was really hurt when, when you said that or, or this situation, and I felt neglected. Do not power up. Do not stand up and say, well, well, who are you to say? Because you do this and this and this. Hey, don't bring out a list at that moment. Because someone is vulnerable and bringing something to you, 
And the only thing you should be doing in that moment, because I love her, I don't care about if I'm right or wrong in this moment, but obviously she's hurt. And, and I've done something now to hurt her. And I, I don't want to hurt her. This is the last thing on the planet I want to do. Uh, so when someone is bringing that to you, be soft. Hear the Holy Spirit in that moment. Listen to what they are saying and take the blame. Ask for forgiveness, especially men. I want to, I want to charge you with this. We read in Colossians before, and it's written in Ephesians even clearer in Ephesians chapter five. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave his life for her. Listen, Christ took a lot of blame from me. Jesus took all of my blame. It wasn't his fault, but he took it because he wanted to reconcile me with God. So if Christ did that, and he's my example, how to love her, my responsibility as a husband is to bring that peace, is to bring that forgiveness, is to bring that life again, back to relationship. So I will take the blame because obviously there's something wrong. There's something off. And I will say, I am so sorry. Can you please forgive me? I'm sorry I hurt you. Would you please forgive me? And Many times we're going to talk about this on the point number three too. It, it takes more than once. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's not just like, well, of course, I, yeah, I don't know. And I'm just, no, then I ask again, hey, I'm sorry, you're upset. Uh, you're the last person on earth I want to hurt. Can you please forgive me? And you do that and you do that again and again and again. And then also being able to not just say, I'm sorry, but also prove it with your actions. Um, to follow up with action is actually the best way of doing something because then you know that what you say means something. Um, yeah, I change. I mean, yeah. I want to change because it's hurting you. And, and, and an apology will not, should not start with, well, if you're offended, I'm a sorry. Or if, if I did something to offend you, I'm sorry. No, that's not what we're talking about. But you obviously hurt your partner. So, so you don't even have to say, if I did, no, you did. So say what I did was wrong. And I'm sorry that I hurt you um, and change. Um, and, and, and another thing to throw in here, uh, we're going to, we're going to move on here, but there's so much to talk about. Um, sometimes you need to talk about what you're easily offended by. Um, something may be on me that I'm, this is, I'm easily offended in this area that is different from her. And she needs to know what I'm easily offended by, not because that's an excuse. I still have to grow as a person and, and learn, but she can also learn not to push those buttons and go that direction. And for, from Steph and I, it's, it's very different areas um, where I will easily be offended or hurt. Stephanie will easily be offended and hurt. And, and we just want to make sure that we don't we don't intentionally go there, but we learn and we adapt, we change. Um, we have decided just to give you some examples, like early on in our marriage, we have decided and we've been holding this firmly that we will never mock each other. Um, uh, we will never harshly disagree when we're in public uh, in a setting with other people. Well, no, you're wrong. Like we never say that. Even if I feel that, I will, we will take that privately and we will talk that out because we don't want to disrespect each other in front of other people. So those are things we never joke on each other's expenses public, publicly, but we talk about all of this later, right? We, we have decided that we talk to each other first uh, about our lives and about our relationship before we talk to another family member about it. Like, like I know that Stephanie will not call her mom and talk about her and I before we talk about it. And, and probably not even after, like, like just those things that we have decided, let's not even go there, but, but we work on this um, together. All right, so how do we overcome this? Uh, well, we repent and we ask for forgiveness. This is hard work. This is intentional work, but remember, Happiness is not the goal, but Christ-likeness is the goal. So this is what he's calling us to do in every single situation. Because if we do not work on the little offenses right now, they're going to become long-term distance makers 
over years to come. So we need to work on that. All right, number three, misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. And the sentence we use here is when we don't take time to understand one another, but we are uh, we don't listen to one another. We don't we don't understand the root cause. Um, if you want, and I want to speak specifically to to men uh, starting off, and then Stephanie can speak a little bit to to women here. Um, but men, if you want to understand your wife, uh, you cannot just listen to her words because many times she's saying things and she doesn't even know really what she's saying or what she means by what she's saying. Um, she will discover what she means as she's talking about it. Guys, we want clarity. We want the bottom line. We want solutions. Uh, we want to fix the problem, but, but women are created differently, beautifully differently. And they want to speak about feelings they want to they want you and i as men to understand what they feel in a situation we have a very I think practical the, yeah the best way of getting what you want and i want yes. at the same time yeah, yeah. Uh, we discovered this early on uh, we were living in stockholm and and I, i'm i'm such a like practical fix fixer so and i took the blame i don't i have no idea what we thought about but we thought about something earl and and i'm like okay i just gonna take the blame i don't think it was my fault but i'm gonna take the blame and i said okay honey would you please forgive me and 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 in my mind logical mind that's the end of the conversation right and stephanie said yeah i'll forgive you but and I got so upset. <laughs> I got frustrated. I'm like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Do you forgive me or not? If you forgive me, there is no but to it. Yeah, I forgive you. But no, you don't understand. Jesus didn't say I forgive you, but. but. And we had a bigger fight because of that scenario. That is your forgiveness. That's the end of it. It's, it's thrown into the lake. It's disappeared. We don't talk about it. We don't remember it anymore. But. I just want you to know how I feel. And I didn't understand it. I was young and immature. And then I learned something. And this is the win, all right? So, so, so now when we have those moments, I want to listen. And I'm listening for her feelings. What is she feeling? What is she saying? What is she experiencing right now? And, and I just have to turn off that logical brain, the bottom line, the solution. And I'm listening and I'm listening and trying to understand what she's feeling. And then I want to confirm what she's feeling. So Stephanie's talking, describing this scenario. And all I'm thinking is, what is she feeling? What is she feeling? And I put a an, an hand on her and I said, you feel insecure in this situation, right? And she may say, yes, that's exactly what I feel. But most times she's like, no, that's not at all what I feel. Because <laughs> we're discovering this together. But the, the amazing part of that is yeah. that even if I'm wrong in my trying to understand what she feels, she feels great. Like even if I was wrong in my. Yeah, you're and, helping me find my emotions and validating yeah. them. And honestly, that just solves the issue. Yeah, like, like that, okay, okay. So it's not insecurity. So you feel frustrated, right? Yeah. Yes, that's exactly what I feel. And, and we didn't really solve the problem. We didn't really solve the situation. But we really did. But yeah. we really did. Yeah. Like all of a sudden it's like kisses and flowers and like life in the room. And as a guy, we're like, wow, we didn't really get to the bottom line. We didn't really solve it. But yes, you did. So guys, listen for feelings. Listen to emotions. Uh, engage and look into her eyes. Be present in the situation. Uh, affirm the feelings uh, in in all of that. Um, we 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 want to fix the problem, and that's really how we're fixing misunderstandings. Yeah, yeah. we don't want to be fixed in that way, but we want to be understood yeah. and heard, and being able to express really what we feel. And once you um, jump in and understand that, we feel like you're on my side, and that's really what I want to feel. That yeah. you are here with me, you understand me, you're on my side, and that solves um, a lot. Yeah. But then talking about guys. Um, they never want to be approached as the problem. And so um, a lot of times where there are issues, we as women tend to be or need to be careful of not being nagging and negative and like, you have not done this, you got to fix this. But instead, 
put them as the solution to the problem. Like I am so happy that in this time when we are um, distressed in our finances that I know that you're gonna make a way or we're gonna make a way to make this happen instead of taking it the other way around. And um, if you would yeah. not be so lazy and sit on the couch all the time, we would not be in this situation. Like a guy doesn't wanna hear that. It won't help. So that's why the Bible is warning all the time. Don't nag. Ladies, do not nag. Do not nag because it's actually, it's eating up a man from the inside. Uh, practical is like, if, if, like, if you want to help a man change, praise and encourage and, and talk about the solution, like stupid things like uh, Stephanie can say, Daniel, you take out the trash the best way. No one can take out the trash better than you. And it's always so clean. And, and like, I feel like the best trash taker there is in the world. And, and I feel like, um, of course, I want to show her what a great trash remover I am. Instead of nagging, you know, you never take out the trash. You never, you know, what then you're solving it by actually talking about your husband as the solution and not mm -hmm. as the problem. We hope this is helpful uh we have two more and we're going to quickly wrap them up here uh but how do you overcome this distance maker well understand one another and empath empathize with one another um so the last two are actually two quick ones um to wrap this up uh, and more spiritual ones that we want to end on this note but the fourth distance maker can be bitterness um, and this is now actually re reversed of the one that we talked about before of offense. Offense is, is now I'm choosing to forgive. But what if I'm on the offended side? Uh, well, bitterness will happen when I get offended and choose not to forgive, even if she's doing everything right, even if she's apologizing and asking for forgiveness. But I harbor that in my, my heart and I lock it in. And I just, you know, pile that offense on top of everything else I'm carrying and I never let it out and I never talk about it. Then it will create bitterness and anger in you. And the Bible says that that bitterness and anger will, will give the devil a foothold. And all of a sudden he's got a grip on your heart and therefore on your marriage. Um, and, and it can be situations like if you're always angry uh, and you bring anger into your marriage, we know that's a big problem, especially in the midst of a pandemic that you may react in anger. Well, ask yourself and ask the Holy Spirit, why am I so angry all the time? Because I'm probably not angry at her. I'm probably just harboring anger on the inside. And now the devil has a grip on that. I may be angry at myself. I may be angry at a specific situation and I may be harboring bitterness in my life. There may be someone that I need to forgive. And first of all, do I need to forgive my my spouse. Um, it can come from the, the past, but we want to encourage you. You, uh, if, if the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy the, Jesus, he came and he's stronger. He's better, right? Greater is he who lives in me than the one who lives in this world. Jesus came to give life and life abundantly. He's not just asking you to cope with things and, and how to cope with my anger. No, he wants to remove that. He's here to bring life. He's here to do heart surgery in you, but you need to be open to do that. And you need to ask yourself, why am I holding on to this? Is it an offense that turned into bitterness, that turned into anger? Who have I not forgiven? And release that unforgiveness is the most dangerous thing that you can hold on to in your life. And unforgiveness between you and your partner is devastating. The Bible warns us if we, even if we are Christians, even if we are saved, if I'm harboring unforgiveness, it's one of the things that can lead to me losing my salvation. Because the Bible says, if I don't forgive, I cannot be forgiven. So, so I don't want to worry anyone now if you're dealing with that. But if you know that you're harboring unforgiveness now, that's the first homework you need to take now. Take it to Jesus. Take it to your people around you to help you get rid of that unforgiveness because that can eat you up from the inside. All right. It says here, uh, the solution, overcome this distance maker, forgive forgive your partner i don't have the strength and if i forgive like weird thoughts like this well if i forgive will he really know that he did something wrong well it doesn't really matter unforgiveness will only hurt you 
Unforgiveness is not hurting. It's not a revenge tool that we can use. Again. It's not hurting her that I don't forgive her, but it's hurting me and it's creating a distance. Um, and the last one will be uh, stubbornness. When I simply refuse, and this is the last part of it, when I simply refuse to understand, I don't want to understand. I don't want to change. I don't want to grow. I don't want to admit mistakes. I'm just stubborn. Um, no one has ever been criticized into positive change, right? So if 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 my spouse, now I can talk about Stefan like this because she's the least stubborn person in those areas. She wants solutions. But if Stefan will be in a place that she has refused, I cannot change her. I cannot talk her into change, but I can do one thing and we want to end with that. Uh, sorry, wrong way. The only one way to overcome this distance maker, it's prayer. Even if your partner right now, even if your spouse right now is not with you, maybe you're watching this alone, or maybe you're really watching this alone, even if you're both sitting there watching and listening to this, you feel alone and you feel like your, your partner is not ready. Well, don't nag. Don't try to change him or her, but pray for them. Uh, Stefan has actually told me so many times when we disagree on something, and I stand my, my ground and, and, and not like even a fight, but just stuff that we disagree. She says, well, I always go through the Holy Spirit. I talk to him about it. I pray about it. And all yeah. of a sudden I change, <laughs> you know, it works very well. <laughs> it works very well. She's not fighting fair because she'd get God on her side to fight, but, but uh, pray, declare, speak faith over your partner, take them to the throne room, pray for them. Thank God for them. Take it to God's level. He's your counselor. He's your advocate. He's yeah. for you. He's for your marriage. He's there with you. He, he is the founder of marriage. He's is the covenant keeper of marriage. I'm in a covenant with God about my partner. Listen, this is, he's on your side. So bring your problems to him and pray over it. So we're going to end right now. And then Pastor Christopher will step in here probably, but but we want to end and just pray and declare over you as we started. We want to wrap this up and then we're going to continue next week and talk more practical situations. But let's just declare uh, together yeah. in Jesus name. Father, we pray right now again. We declare life where there is no life. We declare God uh, your overpowering life, your forgiveness, your grace into every single situation and into every marriage, God. You brought each of us here to strengthen our marriages, God. And we thank you that you are our great counselor. You, Holy Spirit, you're the advocate. You are our leader. You're the one, the paracletos that is speaking life into every situation right now. Jesus, you came to give life and life abundantly. And we declare that now in Jesus' name into every every situation in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Here's all of the homework. Um, what we are asking, encouraging you to do, we're not forcing anyone, but why don't you take some time, draw that scale five, four, three, two, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five on a piece of paper and, and, and ask yourself, where am I? Where's my spouse? Is there a distance between us? then what is causing that distance? And go back and look at the five areas. Do we carry one of those five distance makers? Let's work on that one thing uh, right now. And number two, uh, practical fun. How are we connecting in spirit, soul, and body? Uh, look at your calendar and agree to make room for a minimum of two times two times two in all of this. Um, Thank you today for listening, Pastor Christopher. You want to and step maybe in? Maybe for next time, if there are questions. Yes. Um, good time to think about them, and we might have more time to answer on that session. Kofa, maybe or... you can say how they can submit questions so that we can get some time. <laughs> yes. Before, and what? then we can spend some time next time and talk about it. So, so sorry, Danny. I I didn't hear you, hear you in the end. Um. We, we were actually planning to have some questions in the end. Uh, is, is it okay to take a few questions? You have sure. a few more minutes? Yeah, great. This was amazing teaching. Th thank you so much. And even, even a homework, I love that. And um, let's, let's just open it up for a few questions. We will not go so long, but if, if you came with a question, um, okay. Keely, let me know. Can I unmute and ask a question? If, uh, or maybe you can raise the hand. I think if if you guys go to uh, to more and then there is 
there is a function where you can raise your hand and key. No, Jonathan Quist has a lot of questions for us. He always have a lot of questions. Yeah. I know Jonathan Damot came with a lot of questions. That's how he told me before. So if you have a question, this is your chance. You don't have, you don't get many more chances like this in your life. So ask the questions now if you came with a question, or write it in the chat and I will read it if if you're a bit shy to 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 ask a question yourself. Um, okay, uh, here is a question. What is the best advice for engaged couples? From Riesa, Daniel and Stephanie. What's the best advice for engaged couples? Um, I think it's a really good time to actually, I mean, you're going into marriage and to set some foundation work on expectations that you have. Um, even small things like who's gonna take out the trash, who's gonna do the dishes, who's gonna do just practical things. It's just a good way of, you know, you come from, we didn't really get to talk about this, but sometimes you come from so many different um, families or cultures and some things that you are thinking it, this is gonna be the normal of our life. Um, suddenly you merge with another culture and you're like, no, the milk is not supposed to be right there. And he's like, yes, it's of the place course. it's supposed to be right there. Stupidest thing I heard, not to put the milk on that shelf in the first, like stupid little things like that, because every family has unspoken rules uh, that you don't even know that you have before someone is breaking that rule and and that happens many times in marriage and you're like what who is this person who's who will buy this kind of detergent for the washing machine that is the weirdest thing like because it's a rule in your family but you never talked about it so expectations is really really good expectations are great i mean what we mentioned before like keep working on your life with god i mean that's just a something that you can always do. And um, I had something else that I was thinking about. If, here's another thing. I mean, talking about sex and being engaged, um, it's a gift from God. Uh, and But he, he wants it in the under the covenant. So that's why God is asking us to wait to have sex until we marry. Because it's a blessing. It's, it's sensitive. It's beautiful. But it's fragile. So he wants it to be under the blessing of the covenant. Uh, but it's also strong bi biological need that we have. So sometimes when you engage and you're getting so close to that, um, make sure that you have guardrails, make sure that you have yeah. clear boundaries that you both have talked about and agree upon. Because when the heat is turned on, it's 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 easy to take a few steps too far. Even if you didn't plan, you would never think you would go that, but it's, it's just a strong force because it's there. It's God's gift for you, but it's just a little bit premature right now. So we had rules like we don't, we don't put any hands when we have our bathing suits or bikinis on, you know, it's just the rule that we had and we never spend uh, the night alone together ever we always had someone else there or, or you know slept in a different room but you know it's just clear boundaries that we had so that we could make sure that we honor God in every step that we take and now if if anyone slips and falls then it's better to confess that and bring accountability into that and talk to a small group leader a pastor or someone in your life just to make sure you bring light to the situation because the devil he operates in darkness and, and repentance and restoration is a part of the kingdom of God. So I just want to throw that out there as well. But work on your marriage, invest in your marriage, read marriage books, talk to married couples about their best tips as you're engaged. Don't wait.